It's getting time for deer season in South Carolina, and Bob is working on his property for another exciting time of harvesting a good buck. But he has a big problem with hogs possibly overrunning, and he needs to take care of that problem first. Bob will discuss ways to help with a hog problem and introduce you to a product that may help you landowners facing the same issue. Plus, later in the show, we head over to our good friends at Mix and Seeds to talk planting food plots. All this and a whole lot more. And it all begins right now. That is catfishing from Santee. Perfect Lake Hartwell Harbor. This week's destination is brought to you by Chevrolet. Chevrolet, finding new roads in the outdoors. Today's Chevrolet destination features another great hunting destination that you can find more information about by going to Bob's Top 16 at www.bobredfern.com. And be sure to check out all the award-winning Chevrolet vehicles at chevrolet.com for your next outdoor destination. Thanks for joining me this week, folks. You know, in just a few short weeks, the fall deer season is going to get started all across the country. And as usual, I've been getting ready and have, well, some nice bucks on the camera over the past several weeks. A couple of months ago, I spotted on my game cameras a big problem that was obviously hurting the number of deer I was seeing. As you can see by this video, I went to the stand and captured some video just to back up what I'd been seeing on my game cameras. I was having a wild hog problem. And I know y'all out there all across the country know exactly what I'm talking about. Not just one or two, but a whole host of them. Not only were they causing destruction to the property and the food plots, but they're eating all the supplemental feed that I had out for the deer and the turkeys. I was seeing fewer deer and the turkeys simply disappeared for about four months. What I was seeing was a wild hog population that, well, it was really off the charts. So I decided, well, it was time to take care of my hog problem, or at least try and put a dent in them. I've always heard that hunting pressure on hogs will make them go away or, well, move someplace else. So here we go on a hot, humid August hog hunt right here on Bob Redford's Outdoor Magazine. All right, folks, feeders went off at 12.05. It's been a few minutes thereafter. You can see it's about 12.30. They're here like clockwork. I've been watching this for about three months. Let me see if I can't figure out, find the biggest and the baddest in here, see if that's the sounder pig. But these things absolutely have been playing havoc with my deer and turkeys. I've been messing with these things for about three and a half, almost four months. So let me see if I can't get my sight up here. I'm using a 223, my AR-15 today, and I'm using my ATN video binos to do this. So I'm going to look and see if I can get one of the big ones in the gun sights. And come on, separate just a little bit. Just a little bit. Give me a little, give me a little room. Give me a little room. All right. Uh, give me a little room. I got you. Deer and turkeys, well, they seem to get along really well together, but you throw in wild hogs into the mix, and really the turkeys want no part of it. I'm sure the hogs will return at some point, but I'll be waiting. Stay tuned. When we come back, if your hunting property has been overrun by wild hogs, then you need to see and stay tuned for this next segment. We may just show you what you're looking for. Then later, I'll show you some new techniques I've done in preparation for the upcoming deer season. Here's a safety tip from DNR. If you're leaving a hunt after sunset, make sure you have a headlamp or a flashlight to alert other hunters of your presence. Remember, safe hunt is no accident. This has been another safety hunting tip from South Carolina DNR. Want to know the difference between power bait and other soft plastics? Ask the fish. Berkeley scientists have thousands of flavors tested on thousands of fish. Natural, man-made, every bait that's ever hit the water. And no matter the shape, size, or color, Powerbait is the only one that is scientifically proven. 
fish bite and will not let go. Take a journey off the beaten path to Lake Hartwell Country. Tucked away in the northeast corner of South Carolina, Lake Hartwell Country is a hidden gem with waterfalls, mountains, beautiful lakes, and history dating back to Revolutionary War times. For the outdoor enthusiasts, Lake Hartwell Country offers fishing, hiking, water recreation, horseback riding, and so much more. Come visit Lake Hartwell Country, the land by the blue wall. Southern Woods Plantation. The name itself conjures up images of a time gone by. A time of towering pines, mule-drawn wagons, and covey after covey of Bob White quail. Southern Woods Plantation has been chosen as one of the top six hunting destinations in America. They offer great hunting, comfortable lodging, wonderful food, and world-class dogs. Southern Woods Plantation, where the past can still be experienced today. A good hunting safety tip is when you're hunting from an elevated stand to use a haul line to get your bow or your rifle to the stand and out of the stand, but remembering to keep the muzzle of the rifle down at all times. This has been another safety hunting tip from South Carolina DNR. Bob Redfern's Outdoor Magazine is being brought to you by these great partners. Chevrolet, find new roads with Chevrolet by Lake Hartwell Country. The land by the blue wall. By the South Carolina Agriculture Department. It's a matter of taste. By the old 96th District of South Carolina. Come discover the unexpected wonders of South Carolina's 96th District. And by South Carolina Embroidery and Screen Printing. Your one stop for all your company's promotional needs. Well, folks, welcome back to the show. You know, in the first part of today's show, we talked about eradicating hogs on your property and they're all over the United States. Everybody is, well, they've just got a hog problem. And we have really, we've really located an old friend, okay? A guy I used to work with years ago, but this guy, Bob Harkins, is a representative for a new system called Pig Brig. And Bob, I wanna thank you, okay? I know 32 <laughs> years with the Department of Natural Resources, that's kind of where we met. Bob also, I have to tell you, he is an avid bird hunter. He's trained a lot of my bird dogs over the years. He's still bird hunting, but he manages property. And now, one of the key things that we're gonna talk about here, that I know you've done, you've trapped your whole career, okay? You've trapped it all, okay? Now we're trapping pigs, mm -hmm. okay? And the pig brig system. Tell me about this system. I tell you, th this, is, this is really innovative, but it works. It definitely works and the simplicity of it is what drew me. And I think uh, of all the traps, and I've used other traps for pigs, and, and pigs are so destructive. And uh, the other traps that I've used work, and they're fine, but this is so simple. And, and it works uh, without using uh, your telephone, you not required or not needed that, uh, that you have an app on your phone that you, that you have to use. All the pigs go in. We've done the uh, cameras on all these traps in development. The inventor of these traps was here. We developed, he developed it here, I assisted him. And uh, the confidence I have in this trap is uh, better than any I've seen. And well, let's, let's talk about, you know, setting this thing up. It's about what? Uh circumference here about 50 feet round I guess yeah around it's about 20 diameter okay. 20 feet. so uh, if you're using this system out what what are the parameters it's easy you're right it's lightweight uh, and again it's cost effective so that's mm -hmm. one of the key things that mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. uh, and with guys like you as being a representative for pig brig that's one of the key things that, that you know you're not there's not a lot of big metal gates and and wire and mm -hmm. all kinds of stuff and, and you're mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. some of the the systems that i've seen and developed is you got a camera on it it's got a, a motor that drops the trap it, it i mean you, you've got all kind. Th not this not this this is uh i can put it on my atv yeah even a four-wheeler uh i can bring it all in at one time wherever in a remote site even in the woods, you can set this up using trees, actually, and set it up. And now you have to hustle to do it, but in one hour, I can have this thing ready to go, ready to, uh, and it takes some conditioning. It takes a few days to get them conditioned to come in and out. And uh, sometimes within four or five days, you're ready to catch. Well, one final question here. Let's talk a little bit about Pig Brig and, and Tony, uh, the owner there. He, 
he has just a history yeah. of eradicating different kinds of species, and that's kind of how you got hooked up with him. Exactly. So, I mean, folks can see that when they go to pigbrig.com mm -hmm. and, and look at this system and other things, but I think that's a very, very unique uh, he, individual. You know, relationship. He, yeah. he has uh, been doing this for 25 years uh, worldwide. Not just, He does a lot of contracts with the government, Fish and Wildlife Service, uh, Nas National Fish and Wildlife uh, uh, Refuges, where he goes in where they have problems with whatever species it is, and he removes them. That's been his business. He's got, uh, I think, six employees, uh, and they, they do a lot of work in the United States, but they, they travel the world. Well, and that's one of the things, too. And, folks, I, I just wanted to establish that with Pigbrig and the owner, uh, the credibility there, okay? This guy is not just something he decided to dream up. I mean, he, he's put this thing together with 25-plus years' worth of of experience here and yeah. so what he's come up with here is just a very very unique system and again you're right I, I really really am so thankful that we actually or I ran on to you uh, I haven't seen you in so long man been, we're, we're gonna, you know I don't have any bird dogs anymore well, but that's okay I've got too many so you come well come we, go with we'll me. have to come do a show <laughs> yeah, okay and because okay. and, we'll you know how that. I love bird dog hunting I but I I just we we need to go get behind some of your nice bird dogs and just just talk years of, of relationships and training I want to thank you for being a guest on the show today if your property has a wild pig problem and you have tried other methods to no avail then go to pigbrig.com and see the easiest and most effective feral hog trap system on the market today. Pigbrig's patent pending design is lightweight, fast to set up, and easy on your budget. The Pigbrig system can catch up to 45 pigs at a time with no gate. And the best thing, it's built right here in the USA. Visit pigbrig.com today and get rid of your feral hog problem today. Stay tuned. When we come back, Bob talks more deer prep as we take a look at a new wildlife seed company and the products they offer for growing abundant food plots on your property. Nestled in the western part of South Carolina is the Old 96 District. Comprised of Abbeville, Edgefield, Greenwood, Lawrence, and McCormick Counties, this region is rich in history, fishing, hunting, and small town flavor. Old 96 District is part of the South Carolina freshwater coast, covering over 2,000 miles of shoreline, which offer many fishing opportunities and is home to the only wild turkey museum in the world. Local businesses offer a wide variety of unique gifts and foods. Make sure you discover the undiscovered wonders of the Old 96 District of South Carolina. It's Chevy Truck Month, and it's time to add the perfect accessories to your new Chevy. Make it bolder. Make it work harder. Make it your own. Find new possibilities. Find new roads. Get great offers from GM Financial and 1750 cash allowance on Silverado 1500 Crew Cab pickups. Plus, now during Truck Month, get a $1,000 accessory allowance towards the purchase of eligible accessories. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. If you are going to be towing a tuber, skier, or wakeboarder, remember your boat has to be equipped with a wide angle mirror or a responsible observer. This has been another safety tip from the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources. South Carolina's Santee Cooper Country invites you to relax and get away from the pressures of everyday life from world-class fishing, golf, camping, or lakeside dining on traditional Southern cuisine. With over 450 miles of shoreline, Santee Cooper is an exciting challenge for fishing, canoeing, and kayaking, offering unique outdoor adventures for the whole family. Santee Cooper Country. Discover the natural wonders of South Carolina's Great Lakes. To receive a free newsletter and e-news, just log on at SanteeCooperCountry.org. To safely cross an obstacle like a fence, unload your firearm, cover the muzzle, place the firearm on the other side of the fence, cross the fence, reload, and continue your hunt. This has been another safety hunting tip from South Carolina DNR. The Sportsman's Table is brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Agriculture. Whether you live in South Carolina or coming to vacation, make sure you're purchasing South Carolina-grown farm products. Make sure your food is South Carolina certified. It's a matter of taste. Folks, welcome to the Sportsman's Table this week. We are here at the International Culinary Institute 
of Myrtle Beach on the beautiful campus of Ori Georgetown Technical University. And my guest chef is Executive Chef Zach Keatley from Costa Coastal Kitchen and Bar in Myrtle's Inlet, South Carolina. And I tell you what, he's got a great fish recipe for us. But listen, this one's going to be a little bit different twist. You know, we always do one thing and do it first. Tell us how we're going to cook this and put this together, Zach. All right. It's a... Uh spicy grouper over fried green tomatoes okay. and we're gonna have a little spinach under the tomatoes um, so first we're gonna start with cooking the tomatoes ah okay well that's a twist yes sir okay normally guys you know gals cook the fish first yes but it's a thin piece of fish I don't want it to overcook and we're cooking the fish in the sauce I got you okay so. well let's get started All right. there you go now fried green tomatoes one of my favorites I can tell you right now oh yeah mm -hmm. always a big hit anytime oh, they yeah. run them. Wow now, golden brown, mm -hmm. you know. Yes, sir. You know, Both sides. You know, tomatoes can be a little bit difficult. They you know? can. Um, but and this is certainly a lot easier if you have a fryer at That's home. true. Yeah, you just pop them in and let them go. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, while those are frying, what, what are we going to do after they get done? All right. After we get that done, we are going to saute some spinach and just set it to the side. And then um, we'll season our fish. Okay. Awesome. Mm. Now, you, you've been an executive chef for over 16 years. Wow. No, not an executive chef for 16 years. Okay. I, I've been cooking for 16 there years. There you go. Okay. I started managing and being a chef probably about six, seven years ago. I got you. Okay. Well, you obviously have a passion for what you do, so. I do. I yeah. really enjoy it, especially when people tell me how much they like the food. Oh, man. Mm. All right. Now, you don't want to cook it too much because <clears throat> we're just going to set it aside and it'll keep cooking a little bit in the pan. You're just going to get a little bit of wilt to it? Is That's that it. Okay. That's I got it. You. All right. All right. Now, we're going to have our pan going for our fish okay. and let's go ahead and season it. All right. We do salt. Okay. A little black pepper. You know, a grouper has such a great taste to it, too. Oh, yeah. Um, of all the fish that we get in, this is probably the one that we sell the most. I got you. Yeah. All right. And then a little bit of fresh herbs. It's thyme, oregano, and sage. I got you. This mm. at Costa, this is like our, uh, it goes in everything. Got you. Mm. All right. Well, that's kind of one of your signatures then. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Well, and that's why folks need to come on down to Myrtle's Inlet. And, uh, yes, sir. From Myrtle's Inlet to Myrtle Beach. I mean, everybody's got it going on. Mm-hmm. All right. I think we're ready. Okay. All right. And then what we're going to do, we're just going to get a real nice sear on it. We're going to flip it over, and we're going to drain the oil out, and then we're going to make our sauce. I got you. All right. So now we're adding the ingredients for our sauce. Oh, great. Salt, pepper, garlic, a little crushed red pepper. Corn, mm. tomatoes. Got to have fresh tomatoes. Yeah. Those fresh herbs I talked about. Oh yeah. Okay. All right. And now we're gonna hit it with a little bit of wine. Ooh. Everybody's good friends. Chardonnay. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now we're gonna place the fish back in. Oh wow. All right. And we're gonna add some chicken stock. Oh man. That is a unique recipe. Some fresh lemon. Mm. And now we're just going to kind of let it do its thing for a couple minutes. All right, so now our sauce is reduced enough. Okay. So we're going to add a little bit of butter to finish it. Mm. Butter's always good. Yes, sir. And then we're going to add the crab. You want to add the crab at the end so it doesn't break up too much. I got you. Huh. Oh, wow. I would never have thought of that. <laughs> and now with the butter in there, the sauce will thicken up a little bit. Yeah. And we are ready to plate. And it smells really great, Zach. Mm. Okay. All right. So ah, First the spinach. Yes, sir. The spinach goes down first. Okay. Just a little color. And it keeps the tomatoes from sliding around on the plate. There you go. <laughs> Going ice skating on the plate. That's I right. <laughs> Ah, my favorite. Mm, green maters. I guess. Mm -hmm. mm -mm -mm. Those are truly certified. Yes, sir. Mm. Okay. And the fish 
right on top. Oh, wow, what a dish. Listen, I'll tell you what, there ain't nobody gonna walk away hungry with that one. Mm. No, sir. All right, and now I'm gonna plate our sauce. Oh, wow. Try and get some of the big chunks on top that to make it nice. Mm -hmm. And then we just pour the sauce over top. Oh, wow, Zach, that is fabulous. All right. That is fabulous. And then, just a little bit of fresh parsley. Mm. And a little bit of fresh microgreens. There you go. Got to have the greenery. Look at that. Wow. And there it is. Yes, sir. Ah, that is a great grouper dish. I want to thank you so much for being a guest on the show. Thank it's you. It's really been a pleasure having you. And you know, folks, as always, it's a matter of taste. Log on to CertifiedSE.com and see what's fresh on your menu. And we'll be right back here again next week on another great recipe on the Sportsman's Table. To find out more information on supporting local South Carolina farmers and their products, visit CertifiedSC.com. It's a matter of taste. It's Chevy Truck Month, and it's time to add the perfect accessories to your new Chevy. Make it bolder. Make it work harder. Make it your own. Find new possibilities. Find new roads. Get great offers from GM Financial and 1750 cash allowance on Silverado 1500 Crew Cab pickups. Plus, now during Truck Month, get a $1,000 accessory allowance towards the purchase of eligible accessories. Find new roads at your local Chevy dealer. Welcome to Upcountry South Carolina. Discover the six counties in Upcountry South Carolina that run from metropolitan cities with fine dining and cultural events to pristine natural beauty and all the adventure that goes with it. From hiking, rafting, to some of the best fishing in the Southeast. Six counties, one state, a million opportunities. Upcountry South Carolina, perfectly seasoned. Bob Redfern's Outdoor Magazine is being brought to you today by these great partners. By the South Carolina Department of Natural Resources, making life better in the outdoors of South Carolina. By Abu Garcia, fish to win with Abu Garcia. By Upcountry South Carolina, Upcountry South Carolina, perfectly seasoned. By Southern Woods Plantation, offering the best quail hunting in the Southeast. By Linex in Greenville and Rock Hill, South Carolina your Linex dealer for all your truck customizing needs. And by Santee Cooper Country. Discover the natural wonders of South Carolina's Great Lakes. Folks, welcome back to the show. Fall deer prep. Everybody's getting excited. Deer season's coming. I tell you what, conservationists all across the country are trying to put in their fall wildlife seed. And I have found a new company that I'm really, really excited about. And joining me today from Mix and Seed Company in Orangeburg, South Carolina, is Corey Stewart. Corey, hey, listen, Bob, I tell you what, coming. you know, I am really, really excited about the three blends that we're gonna talk about today and that I'm fixing to put in the ground. But tell me a little bit about Mix and Seed. Give me the big picture here, okay? Yes, sir, yes, sir. And, and you, you guys are just really, you do it all. We do, we do. We've been around for 50 years. We've, we've done a ton in the, the row crop segment, the row crop industry, cover crop. And now we've, we've dedicated a lot of time, resources, and efforts toward our wildlife division called Southland. Well, listen, let's, let's get into this because I'm really, the fall buck brunch, I'm really excited about that stuff. But tell all the folks about the first one that we're gonna talk about of the three, 
uh, that's just really exciting. Yes, sir. The, the fall buck brunch has been tried and true for the last 50 or so years, and it's a seven-way blend with uh, three different small grains. It's got winter peas, some clover, rape, and a brassica as well. And we feel like it is a catch-all multi-species blend that is, is great for, for deer plots in the fall, but also moving into the spring um, provides good sustenance for, for all different wildlife species. Okay, so in the southeast, fog buck, it's probably going to put in the fall mm. after Labor Day. Yes, sir. And then yes, on sir. up into... That's a, that's a good way to, to see it. Probably after Labor Day, no earlier than September 1st, all the way till, um, you know, through October into that first frost. Okay. Area. Well, the second one that I'm excited about, and that's the small grains. Yes, sir. Uh, tell us about that one, because that, that's also, that, that's a great supplement. Yes, sir. And it's a great supplement. It's a, it's a oat, wheat, and, and rye blend, and it's a great supplement as far as being a nurse crop, going into a perennial blend that's already existing, or also just different landowners, managers that want to manage with grass-specific uh, chemicals and, and just a way that they can add some variety to their food plots. Well, and the third one I want to talk about is, is a clover blend, because you know, a lot of folks really like me, I love clover, okay, and of course in the southeast, depending on where you put it and that sort of thing, right. you can get that, that stuff lasts for a long right. time. And I know you guys have got a great blend for that. Yes, sir. We have a six way clover blend. It's a mixture of biennial, annual, and perennial clovers. And the way we, the way we went about it was we did a whole lot of market research into what clover varieties do well in that Southeast footprint. And we feel like we've got a really good blend that's going to do well in a lot of different soil types and different weather conditions. Well, Corey, I want to have you back, okay? As yes, I get mine in the ground, we need to do more talking about wildlife seed and mixing, okay? Absolutely. Because what you guys are doing, because this is continuing to evolve. It evolves every day. You guys are on the top end of the research, and, and you're trying to provide the best product out there for guys who, who do what I do. They that's hunt. right. And, and that's exactly what I really love about mixing. So we're going to have you back. We're going to talk about some more blends in the future. And I appreciate you being there today. You, and, and folks, if you want more information, just log on to mixandseed.com and find out where you can pick up any one or all of the three blends we talked about today. Folks, thanks for watching this week. I really appreciate you looking in. I tell you what, as we get ready for our deer season here, and you know, I tell you what, the hogs, you bet. Log on to pigbrick.com. And I got to thank Bob Harkin for all the things that he did in support of our show this week. Uh, if you've got some hogs on your property, pig brig may be right for you, or again, just pull out the old rifle and start taking them down. I also got to thank all the folks down at Mix and Seed, Corey Stewart and all the crowd down there with Mix and Seed. They got me all turned on to some new stuff. I tell you what, and I've got my dirt turned and I'm ready. I'm going to take this disc off. I've got the Ferminator ready. I got my buck brunch. I got my small grain blend and I've got my clover blend right here that's fixing to go in. So tell you what, keep up with us on Facebook as this stuff grows throughout the fall deer season. I tell you what, you're going to be excited. Remember, mixandseed.com or log on to us and we'll get you down there and connect with those great folks. Well, as I like to say each and every week, the outdoors is my passion. I want it to be yours too. We'll see you right back here again next week on another episode of Bob Redfern's Outdoor Magazine.